The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the uh, terrific Thursday, the December 19th edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Yep, let's have an extraordinary day. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, this show is all about you. So feel free to give us a call. 877-927-6648. I almost forgot the number, but I remembered it. And if you can't call in, well, <clears throat> we've got you covered there. You can send me an email. Let those fingers do the walking. Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. All indices in the green. You've got the Dow up 85, S&P up about 10, NASDAQ 38, Russell up about 3 points, semis up 10. Um, spot volatile index is flat, but it's down 4 pennies. We'll call it flat, $12.54. So we still have a little bit of a rising bottoms pattern, excuse me, inside the spot volatility index. We'll certainly take a look at that. Gold's up five bucks, no big deal. Silver, 11 pennies. Light sweet crude up 26 cents. Natural gas back three cents, leading the charge to the upside. IAC Interactive Corp up 17 bucks, 7.77%. Please pull the one arm band now. You've got Equinix up 10 bucks or nearly 2%. Karuna Therapeutics up 10 or 15%. Netflix up nine, about 3% to the downside. Apogee. Perigee came in yesterday, but it's Apogee Enterprises off, thir off eight bucks, uh, down 20 percent, trading out at 3201. AutoZone in the red zone off three quarters of a percent or nine dollars. Alicos down 650. Lennox off six bucks. Miller Herman Inc. down six bucks. That's 13 percent to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at, and therefore we're going to go to our first request and only request that we've got. Nope, I take that back. I see two of them out here. First request coming in from uh, T Tim, and Tim T M is uh, asking, uh, would we please take a look at X E S? So we will. That is the oil, so one of the oil service. Uh, uh, the S&P Oil and Gas Equipment Services ETF. I'm long since the confirmation signal last Friday. Okay. Uh, just looking to ride it till she runs out of gas. Your take on resistance and support. So as we take a look at, uh, as we do, we start off with our three time frame charts, daily, weekly, monthly. We look for those levels of support or resistance here. In this case here on the daily time frame that's left hand panel prices above resistance that was the top of the daily profile 755 that was a bearish structured profile nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern so to speak if you take a look at the weekly what we can see that's a bullish structured profile price is well above the uh, center line which is 729 you're at 795 this suggests a move up to 853 so tim write down 853 as one of the levels where price is likely headed to on the weekly on the monthly chart i should say price is below the the bottom of its profile old support may become new resistance that's nine dollars and ten cents you got two levels 853 and 910 if we go take a look at the daily time frame chart here with steve-o we'll take a look at my ninja trader charts where i've got my tools now this actually formed tim a bottom on november 21st it was the td setup nine count pattern out there so you caught it you could have caught it earlier than last friday if you were using that pattern uh, it did form a nine count uh, top out here on the 17th. Uh, we saw just simply a hiccup 
of a move, a sideways move out there, telling you that there is strength inside the XES. Now, there's another number to write down on your pad of paper. That's going to be 828. 828 is the next breakdown resistance level on the daily time frame. So you've got 828, you've got 853, and uh, you've got 1190. I'm sorry, you got 910 out there. Those are the areas where it looks like XES is headed to at this stage of the game. On the weekly time frame, uh, this did form a, a nice a weekly bottom out here, Roads Momentum Indicator Bottom. This is on November 22nd. Actually, this is the way you like to see it, right? I believe we had a bottom right around November 22nd on the daily time frame, tying into the weekly time frame chart out here. So looks pretty good. And you've got your resistance levels out there. So, Tim, thanks for writing in. Best of luck with your trade on X. E S. Let's go to our next requester. This one coming in from from Sat P. And Sat wants to take a look at uh, what is it uh, here? Uh, G H is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, so let's go take a look at it, see what it is, and we'll read the question. I bought a few shares of G H recently. That is Guardian Health, straight out to seventy nine ninety one. Can you please suggest if I can still hold the stock or should I exit? Learned a lot this year from your show and it's very helpful for trading. Thank you for that. Well, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and same to you, and thanks for listening to the show. Absolutely out here. So here's what we know about Guardian Health, daily and weekly. The monthly, we don't have any data. It's an IPO from back in October of last year. Just not enough, not enough monthly bars to really generate any information. Price is trading above resistance out here. That's the top of its daily and weekly profile. It is taking on uh, uh, previous swing point areas out here. Uh, looks like the last one might have been from November 26. About 600,000 shares. You're taking that on with volume. 814,000 shares. That's what you like to see it do. Even on the weekly basis, you were dealing with 2.5. You're already at 5 million shares. So this looks very, very good, at least from that standpoint. Let's go over here and take a look at uh, GH, see if there's any other resistance, maybe some TD9 breakdown areas, and we can see there is one, and that's coming to you at 84.18. I don't see a reason to exit this. There's no sign to do that. You may get resistance 84.19, 84.18. Price could also take that level out. So price is moving into prior swing points with volume. I would stay the course 84.18, your next area of resistance on the weekly time frame let's go take a look at it see what we can see out here for guardian health and on the weekly time frame price right now is taking on it's a weekly oscillator unchanged line uh, closing above that is a, a nice uh, positive 7905 is that number that would say over time this could move up to 10584 Four. We'll watch, the, obviously, the uh, daily time frame before we take a look at the weekly, but uh, all systems are go as we speak right now. So best of luck with that trade. Thanks for writing in, uh, and uh, best wishes. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Folks, I want to hear from you. That could be at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, send me an email like Sat P and Tim did, Steve at TFNN.com. Please put radio show question in the uh, subject heading, of course, inside the Tiger's 10. Any ping will do. Before we go to this breakout here, we don't have any new profiles for our equity futures contracts. Those are daily or weekly. And so this says all systems are go to continue to move higher into that top. It's likely just around the corner. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 104, S&P 11 points, about four-tenths of a percent to the upside. I requested Jimmy to take a look at some short-term time frame charts here for the S&P 500. Jimmy, the way that I would be doing that is by focusing on the equity futures contract, the ES Mini. Um, and uh, so if you're a day trader, I, look, you don't have to necessarily trade the uh, futures contracts. But with regard to the patterns, that um, I use out here, that's what you'd want to be accessing and paying attention to those patterns. So here's one thing, uh, Jimmy, that uh, we both know. We can see here, we've been talking about it, that the uh, ES Mini has been uh, trading in this uh, sideways range, this little consolidation, and that consolidation range was set up by its TD setup nine count patterns, the TD setup nine count top and bottom. And what that does, that sets up breakout support and breakout resistance levels. The green lines are resistance, 3202. The support levels were 3,193, where there was another one that formed uh, late yesterday, early this morning, I should say, and that was at uh, 3,197. But I'm going to look at the larger ones, 3,193, 3,205. That is a, a nine-point move. Now, the beauty about that, Jimmy, is that um, you had uh, certainly an opportunity to have, well, you're, if you're trading the s and if you're trading the spies, you didn't necessarily have that same opportunity. But from an ES Mini standpoint, uh, actually at 9 o'clock this morning, as price was moving in towards that support level, breakout support 3193 out there, didn't really get down to it. Um, you know, but that it was probably at 930 when price got above the other breakout level, the one that formed out here at about um, 1230 last night, 3197. Uh, but here's what we know. Price is broken out of this consolidation. That's your black rectangle that you see. That's your measured move out here and uh, typically when you uh, break out of a consolidation you generate a measured move it's equal to or greater than so we can only draw the equal to that would make any sense so it gives you your primary target in this case here you're looking at about 3211 maybe a tick or two maybe two ticks 321150 we can see that this on a 30 minute basis uh, looks like it's going to become bar number eight of a TD setup nine count, I won't know until we see where it closes compared to the bar four bars earlier. That would be bar number four that's labeled on my screen out here. But at this stage, you get to bars uh, 
if eight is the high, or it could be eight, nine, or the bar following nine, um, you know, that's where you would start to look for a price to begin to cool off, maybe pull back, move sideways, something along those lines. So from a scalping standpoint, this is this is what I would be using. This is what I do use out here. I look at the 30-minute uh, time frames, and I really need to understand what other patterns are going on. You know, and what's the bigger picture, right? You first have to have a bigger picture out there with regard to the uh, ES Mini. So what is our bigger picture? What is our bigger picture out here? Well, what we all know is the following things. We have, over the course of the last several days, we have identified several areas of resistance. Uh, first here, we take a look at our market profiles. We know that those levels were passed. Uh, once price got above that, uh, this is the ES mini, that's on the left-hand side. This is on December 12th. Once price closed above it, uh, well, you got the real bullish move the next day when price came back tested the top of that box, old resistance, clearly had become new support out there. And uh, that was at the 3159.75. The low of that session was 3159.75. So what this tells us, what this suggests to you and I is that the markets were ready to move higher. This is above all TAS resistance. So where do we go from there? We could use different A to B equal CD tools, but you and I, we've got something better than that. We've got our horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now this is a monthly time frame chart out here. We just went from a 30 minute chart to a monthly chart. But on this monthly chart, we have both daily, weekly, and uh, monthly horizontal trading range levels out there. These are the horizontal areas that uh, will oftentimes contain price out here. So we know that on the daily time frame, the ES Mini, you know, several days ago, uh, had uh, pulled back, tested and rejected uh, old resistance that became new support. And now we have our next price projection. So in the larger picture out here, you've got 3250. 3250 uh, appears to be where the ES Mini is headed to. That is its next horizontal trading range boundary line. Now, what the ES Mini and all of the indices are doing, uh, they're in, they're playing the game of pickle. I've never played the game of pickle. I like dill pickles out there, but as a metaphor, they're playing the game of pickle. All right, since I don't know what that is, although it's getting to be a popular sport uh, down here, I don't get it, uh, but uh, that's okay because I don't play it. Racquetball, now that's a different sport out there. You know, squash, that's a different sport out there, but, but pickleball, in any event, uh, the reason why it's getting into a, a pickles, because we took a look at this yesterday, just simply the plethora uh, if I can go ahead and, and act like I am a linguist out here, a plethora of uh, potential topping patterns out there. And they suggest, oh, how did that happen? Well, I haven't used this chart here for a bit, so let me see if I can expand this out. Well, what the heck happened there? Oh, man, what's the, what is the deal? Well, there we go. Okay, so there's our daily. Okay, there's our weekly. There's our monthly. There we go. So we take a look at this chart out here. These are just now these are the cash indices. I can do the same with the uh, futures contracts. But this just gives us this is kind of like our our um, our easy way to take a look at multiple markets at the same time to try to understand if there are any top or bottom signals out there. When we take a look at this chart here and you look at the column number three to the from the left, that's got your daily roads momentum indicator signals and you see topping signals all over the place. And you go to the weekly and you say, well, hey, Steve, you go to the weekly and it's bare. It's like your kitchens are bare. Your cupboards are bare, so to speak. I say, not so fast. Go over a few more columns on your right hand side where it says W slash TD9. That's our TD9 count that Jimmy and I were talking about earlier. And take a look at all those eights that are there. Now, those are based on the candle closes from last week's candle. And all those stars tell us that those are valid topping signals. So the weekly topping signals, the daily topping signals. And then look at the monthly roads momentum indicator signals, and you've got topping signals everywhere. That's why I say the markets are in a bit of a pickle. And this is like a game of musical chess out here. Not that the markets won't move higher. They should move higher. They should move higher through when? Through the early part of January. Uh, the cycles don't always take place on the day that they're supposed to. Uh, it's terrible, isn't it? that they don't actually top or bottom on the exact day. Don't you wish it was just simply that easy? What I'm trying to do here is find find that, um, find that uh, right here, find this chart. 
Here, as an example, is a, a chart. This is a chart for the Dow, and the reason why it's for the Dow is because all my seasonal cycle work is done from the Dow because I've got 130 years worth of data to be able to go back and figure it out. And so the red arrows are the dates at which the seasonal cycle typically tops. Those would be January 6th, May 19th, July 21st. Those would be your typical tops. Now, what I do is go back and take a look at the chart and say, well, where was the top that had formed? In this case here, the January 6th top formed 22 days earlier out there. If I take a look at the May 19th top, that was 19 days earlier. Now, if I take a look at the bottoms, those are the green arrows out there. The green arrows, we typically see bottoms around January 30th, June 25th, and October 13th. Those would be our typical cycles out there. And those two arrived early, 23 days, 16 days, seven days out there. Now we know that it's not 13 days because we've got a little bit of a higher high inside of the Dow today. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that, but the typical topping date is January 6th, but it doesn't have to happen on time. Instead, we will wait for the market to tell us. And how will it tell us? Well, pretty good chance it'll create a bearish reversal candle. Steve Rhodes with TFN. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 95, S&P 11. The NASDAQ 100 is up 44 points, about a half a percent out there. Uh, let's go to our next question out here. And again, you can reach us at 877-927-6648 or send me an email like Hector and the fuel injectors did here, steve at tfnn.com. Uh, just please put radio show question in that subject heading. So Hector, hello, Hector. He wants to take, like, he's a bottom fisher out here. He likes those grouper. He does not want to... Um, he does not. He likes to bottom fish out there. Now those groupers. Once you once you grab a grouper, now that's going to be a big fight, uh, and uh, it's going to be a heavy load to lift. Uh, but once you uh, you can eat for a lifetime if you catch a nice big grouper. So bottom fishing, that's a beautiful thing. And he's doing some bottom fishing out here with N Bev. And the question is, has it formed some type of bottom? And Merry Christmas to you as well. Let's go take a look at it. N Bev, out. Let's look at our three time frames. Understand what we've got. Hey, what you've got out here, Hector, is you've got a sign of strength off of that bottom. Now, that's a numero uno lesson uh, that uh, Tom had taught me way back when. Way back when was 2006 when I began my entree into uh, technical analysis. And that's what you like to see out there. So as it formed a bottom, I don't know. We're going to go take a look at the other daily charts out there. But you've got a nice sign of strength. And price taking on the resistance, that's the top of its daily profile at 209. A close above that today and then tomorrow would suggest you've got a potential change in trend out there. If we take a look at the, and expand the daily time, frame chart here for NBEV. We're going to see that it has struggled to close above the top of a profile for mucho grande time out here. The last time was this one sign of strength out here on April 8th. So I guess it does have signs of strength and then it sells off. So holy shnikes out there. Be careful. But we'll go take a look at the other patterns. But it did that. And that was just like a, and that was on April 8th was the last time we saw price above the top of its uh, profile out there. And I take that back. There is another time out here. That other time was this little sign of strength on October 16th. That was a one hit wonder too out there. So now it's got me thinking. It's got me thinking out there, Hector. It should have you thinking, too. So there's Stevie's two-day rule out here. There's my two-day rule. So you want to be able to see price close above that. Uh, if it doesn't, then you know just following the other pattern. But right now, price is above the top of the box. We're going to go with what we've got. It's below the bottom of the uh, weekly, but it is right at the bottom of the monthly at a buck seventy-four, And it looks like a hammer candle right now, doji or hammer, but the month is not over. So far, so good. Let's look at Stevie's other charts out there. And one of our denners, Peak D, said that there's some insider buying. Is that what you said? It just went past my screen so quickly out there. Um, but I think that's what the message was. Now, if we take a look at it, thank you, Peak D, yes. If we take a look at it, price was moving lower, doing less relative energy, and the actual buy signal came yesterday. Yesterday, what you saw was a nice old bullish engulfing. Also looks like a key reversal session. That was a bullish candle. You got a gap to the upside, your second bullish candle. So it looks to me, Hector, like uh, NBEV is headed to 237. Uh, that's where it gets its next resistance at. That's what the daily time frame is showing. Let's go take a look at the weekly, see if we can get some guidance here. We're especially concerned because of those uh, breaks to the upside that we saw. So where was it? Re what was it rejecting? Aha! I knew we could find it. All we have to do was, like Hector, do a little bit of fishing around, and uh, we can see it. Well, what was it? What was it that uh, we saw those breaks to the upside with some nice volume behind it, but it failed, and it failed where? It failed at that magical line. Stevie's green line, which can turn red. When it turns red, well, that's not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Tells you your price oscillator is below zero. And nothing like testing and rejecting that to tell you you've got a real falling price oscillator below zero. And right now, price is testing it. It's probably about 210. We're at 212. So what you're really looking for here on a weekly basis, if NBEV has found a bottom, it will go ahead and do something that it hasn't done since uh, February 15th of this year. Close above that very muy importante line out there, Stevie's green slash red line, otherwise known as the oscillator unchanged line. So tomorrow afternoon, Hector, you'll have your answer because if price closes back below it, it says warning Will Robinson, even though you've got a nice bottoming pattern on the daily time frame out there. So best of luck with that grouper that you've got on your hook out there. Uh, Pat uh, writes in, he says, hey, Hector, he wanted you to, to let you know there's a huge short interest in NBEV. Uh, hard to believe that. Not uh, Pat, I believe you. Um, hard to believe that there is a huge short interest at a $2 stock. Do you realize the type of short cover and rally you could get there? 
I mean, geez, Louise out there uh, to the extent that you like Louise. On the uh, monthly time frame, now let's go look at the monthly time frame out here because if Hector and you and I are bottom fishing, let's go take a look at NBEV on this monthly time frame. We knew the price was pulling back to the bottom of that profile. That could be or should be a level of support. And uh, what we can see here is this is going to be bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. Now you and I know, like Dave Mason knows, that uh, you can form a bottom on bar number eight. And it is right now a hammer doji. We already covered that. We looked at that out there. Um, you can get a lower low, bar nine or bar 10, but bar eights uh, can be the low out there. And as long as next month, the month of January, doesn't close above uh, the price point here. Let me see if I can get it to you. Let's see if I am good. Oh, I am good. Uh, the close was 276. Uh, you would have a firmed monthly bottoming pattern out there. So, Hector, I think the weekly is key. You nailed it. We found it, and that was that uh, weekly uh, oscillator and change line. That's really the level to be watching over the course of the next couple of days. So, Pat, uh, Peak D, thanks for right in. Thanks for helping out. You've got good wingmen and women, Hector, to help you with your trading and investing. No more uh, calls. No calls, actually, today. No more requests by email. Nothing inside the den, I think. But let me expand that. Maybe somebody had asked for something in the den, and I want to do it. Yep, now, Peak wanted to take a look at NT. NX. So let's go take a look at NTNX. Thanks, Peak. I appreciate that. My my window on my uh, whoops, holy cow! What did I do there? My window on my uh, NTNX is it's kind of small. You know, if you if you actually saw the setup here, you'd, you'd you'd probably shake your head. I think it's organized. Some people will walk in here and say it looks like mass chaos. Nah, not really. It's really pretty well organized. But any event out here, it's called Nutanix. Nutanix. That sounds like uh, it sounds like that uh, Frank, uh, what's his name? He does those uh, high gen something Genix uh, ads. What's his name? Frank, 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 what? Frank, what? Gosh, that was, uh, athlete. Uh, uh, I forget his name. Doesn't matter. But here's what we know about New Genix is his deal, right? Uh, New Tanix is somebody else's out there. And uh, here's the deal. Uh, you're saying buy, hold, or sell. Well, on the daily basis right now, you've got uh, three days in a row that have tested and rejected the bottom of that profile. That's 3207. So baseball, that's right. So uh, that's telling me the Frank Thomas, thank you. Yeah, a little, sometimes I just got a little, you know, just a good thing we've got the wing men and wing women out here. Now, the daily, the daily out here, Pika is saying, eh, I'm not so sure. The weekly, on the other hand, you do have price testing support. The old top of its profile, well, guess what? It's not an old profile. It's a brand new one. It formed this week. Sometimes the top of that box and price was above it. Uh, when it forms like that, if the top holds, which is 3171, that would be bullish. Well, we're going to have to really investigate this because price is below the bottom of that weekly profile out there. Hmm. And on the weekly, I'm sorry, in the monthly profile, the monthly profile, the right-hand panel, a uh, peak. This came up off of the lows out there. That was a bullish structured profile. And if you and I were going to say, where would a counter trend rally stop in Nutanix? Because that was a bullish structured profile that price got below. We would have said the center of that monthly profile, 36.45. That's about where price had stopped. But we'll be right back. We'll go take a look at our other charts. We'll go see if there's some other signals for ticker symbol NTNX. I want to hear from you, folks. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol NTNX and trying to answer the question, buy, hold, sell out here. And this is a toughie. This is a toughie. Here's what we know. Price is below a level of support on the daily, uh, testing the top of a brand-new profile on the weekly, which could be bullish if it holds that level by tomorrow, and below the bottom on a monthly. So this is a, uh, this is a toughie out here. Now, the daily is also showing a bottom pattern, a TD9 count. When this uh, equity topped, it was with a TD9 count. It was a bar following nine. It was on the trading day of December, the uh, November 30th out there. So prices pulled back. Uh, what I would do, if you're really looking to enter this, because you've got a valid bottom uh, pattern out here, I would wait for this equity to prove it to you. The proof would at least be getting back inside the box. So it closed above 3207. It's at 3185. Uh, I say a close above 3207, not just trading above it. Then I would say, yeah, you've got a, enough of a buy signal. You've got a dollar 27 as your average uh, true range out there. You know, you go ahead and take a swing at it. You'd be looking at that swing getting up to about 3474, the center line of its daily profile out there. It could get up to 3562. 3375 is another level you'd have to watch. That's Stevie's green line out there. But, you know, if you're looking to enter it, would I sell it? I couldn't sell it right now because you've got a bottoming signal, right? So here you've got that tug of war. Which one is right? Is it with price trading below the bottom of the profile or is the TD set up nine count? Which of those two are correct? And it's really the daily that we need to look at in order to be able to try to identify the pattern out there. So I hope that helps you out, Polar, with regard to, not Polar, that's uh, it just proved that I cannot do two things at once. Even though on the show, I'm always doing like five things at once out there. And uh, so, uh, but, uh, but Polar said, oh, that was a good discussion about NTNX. Don't know what they do. But uh, so, so there's no more. There's no there's no uh, there's no chickens in the oven, so to speak, out here. So I'll wait for the next uh, request. And in the meantime, we'll just do a little bit of surf and safari out here. So what is it the markets are doing? They're headed higher. When is it that they're going to top out if they ever top out one of the levels that you are watching? I know that because uh, I just know it. 
If somebody out there is watching the advanced decline oscillator line, that is panel number two on this chart out here for the New York Stock Exchange. We're watching it approach that 150 level. At 150, if we see a turn down, well, then there's at least going to be some type of sideways move or retracement, or there should be in the markets out there. Those are what Stevie refers to as 150 failures. So right now, it looks like we've got some more room to run to the upside out here. But I had mentioned earlier uh, the problem with the VIX. What's the problem with the VIX? Well, if we take a look at the very bottom right, right now, this is a closing base. We're using a, a line chart out here. Don't often use line charts, but I do for situations like this because it's especially important to me to understand the closing price of the uh, VIX out here. And if we take a look at December 16th, you had the uh, S&P made a high of 3197 or 3203. So we already know that the S&P is making higher highs, even though small bodied candles. But at the same time, you have a rising spot volatility index. Now, somebody out there might ask the question, Steve-O, are you just filling time? Or are you sharing with me something I ought to know? I never just fill time. I'm always sharing something with you that I think you ought to know. See, when you do this show, the cool thing about this show is by, and I'm grateful to each of you that actually listen to the show, because it just says I'm not actually talking to myself, but for the most part, I'm talking to myself out here. But doing this process is doing nothing more than training myself, providing me with more and more conviction. Each day, I get more and more conviction um, because of the tools that we use, because of your help, because we take a look at this stuff. So uh, it doesn't matter whether you're bottom fishing or you're, 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 you're sending in information. And it, it, just, it just is so very helpful. In fact, the way that I started, you know, the ability, you know, there, there, there was a years ago. Remember years ago, folks, uh, you know how, how the herd kind of uh, things just seem to like happen and the herd follows. And so years ago, I think it was Oprah that started it uh, when she got into, she got big into that uh, video or DVD or CD that was out there. The, I think it was called, was it called The Secret? I think it was called The Secret, right? Oh, right, the, the ability about simply being able to attract into your life that which you want. Well, we know that that's the case. You don't think that's the case? If you're a golfer, I want you to play a full round of golf out there, and I want your swing thought before every shot uh, I want you to visualize the water or the bunker or the woods or something, something negative. And I want to see how good of a round you actually have out there. If you watch those pros and they close their eyes, they are visualizing the shot they want to hit, not the shot they don't want to hit. But how did I even get to that? How did I even get so far off track here with regard to just simply your rising bottoms? I know how I got off track. It was when I first went to see Tom. And the first time I met Tom was after listening to him for about 15 minutes, signed up, paid three grand or whatever it was to go to a master trader course. Didn't know anything. I knew about trading and investing. I've been doing it forever. So when I say forever, since 1979 out there, but it was all fundamentals because I'm a bean counter. Ah, that's right. I'm a bean counter out there by, by, uh, by uh, education. Um, but uh, in, in any event out there, uh, what, what, uh, what I would do was I would go back home then and uh, would listen to a show. It was like from four to six, right? I'd either record them or I would try to listen in live and somebody would call in about a uh, position and I would put it on pause. Yeah, so that's when I was, I remember now, was, that was when I think they might have first started doing the iTunes downloads out there. And then I would answer it. I would put myself in his position. Now, and you talk about being able to track things into your life. Well, take a look at what it is that we're doing right now. So, but here's the bottom line. And I know I got off track there. I'm allowed to get off track here. It's almost the season. Heck, tomorrow I've got to fill out my football pool. There's games tomorrow. I don't know if I should pick Utah or Kent State. Do you know? In any event, as we take a look at uh, as we take a look at this, a rising bottom spot volatility index in the face of rising prices uh, is a pattern that can lead to a top as well. So that was really all I was trying to say. But no questions that I see. Uh, maybe John has asked about a question out here. Uh, Starbucks? No, no Starbucks. No, no coffee. I don't drink coffee. I do not drink coffee. Love, love the flavor of coffee. Who doesn't? And coffee ice cream, how can you say no to that? Put a little chocolate in it, how can you say no to that? Um, but let's go take a look at ticker symbol SCCO out here. I believe that is Southern Copper. Uh, SCCO, try to get a feel for what it is doing 
out there. Um, he's asking about daily, weekly, monthly accounts, so SECO. So the first thing that we've got out here, take a look at this. A beautiful, beautiful chart that we're looking at, or set of charts, daily above the top of the profile, weekly above the top of the profile, monthly above the top of the profile. So all of that looks good. If we take a look at the daily time frame, what we're going to see is uh, a higher high today, negating the potential of that TD setup nine count. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern that is underway. Let's do that on the weekly time frame chart so no topping signal that stevie sees here in southern copper uh, back to the prior resistance of this little shooting star back here but it's above that from april looks like about april 18th so that looks good let's go take a look at the weekly time in fact i think we'll do the a to b equals cd pattern now nah, we can't it's not an a to b equals cd pattern is it it's a consolidation pattern and that's what is uh, showing up inside the monthly time frame chart. But we come back from this break. We're finished taking a look at SCCO because Stevie's noticing that price is sitting there right at resistance, John. 42.58, straight at 42.69. That's your next key level of resistance. Will it close above that? Manana. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of DFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. So, John, real quickly out here, I mentioned on the uh, monthly chart, uh, consolidation pattern looks like it's trying to break above that. And if it does, that can take you all the way back to those highs. I put everything else inside the Tiger's Den for you on SCCO. Let's go to a caller we have on the line. That is Isaac in New York. Isaac, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. We've got about two minutes. So how can I help you? 
Okay, thanks for taking my call. A quick question about the OUL. I understand you use it as a magnet and you say the prices are supposed to either get to there or drop down till there. My question is how important or equally important is it whether the OUL is green or red at that time? So the a green one uh, it is very important. Uh, so let's just say in this case here, I'm looking at the ES Mini, a 30-minute time frame chart, and we can see that it is green. And so when price uh, pulls back and is just testing that level, it's just a retracement, right? It's, it helps us to, to differentiate between when is it just a retracement back to support or something else. Now, what a green line tells us is that the price oscillator, the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving averages is above zero. And bullish, uh, a bullish uh, marker would be a rising price oscillator. So how do we know if it's rising? Well, if the color of this line is green, tells us our price oscillator is above zero. If the price is above the green line, now we know we have a rising price oscillator above zero. This is not a tool to identify a top or a bottom. It tells us where support and resistance is, tells us if we have a rising price oscillator or a falling price oscillator, which would be the red kind. And so on the red kind, when price comes up to it, rejects it, and head starts heading lower, you've got a falling price oscillator below zero. That would be bearish. In the ES Mini, uh, this is going to be bar number nine of a TD setup nine count. This says that the ES Mini could or should top, which could make it just simply move sideways or pull back to test Stevie's green line. Uh, and that should begin either at 2 or 2.30 if this pattern is going to uh, help uh, kind of uh, slow down the mojo of the day. Does that help you out? I hope it does because we're about to go right. off air. Thank you. Yeah. You bet. That was Isaac in New York. Folks, have a uh, terrific Thursday. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Two great hours. you got the polar bear, David White. He's up next. Tom O'Brien, and I'll be back with you on fabulous, fantastic Friday. Have a terrific Thursday.